When the fullness of time was come, right Saint Paul, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, that he might redeem them who were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Christmas is that day of the year when the Catholic Church celebrates the feast of the coming of the second person of the Blessed Trinity in flesh and blood in human history. Now, let us try to imagine or rather meditate on what happened when Christ was born in the grotto of Bethlehem. As midnight approached, Our Lady was immersed in prayer, and so was Saint Joseph too. Can anyone imagine what this prayer of Our Lady must have been like? She must have been in the highest ecstasy possible, an ecstasy which no mystic in the church had ever reached before. When it struck midnight, and the infant Jesus was born in a virginal manner without causing her any pain or suffering. Saint Joseph is present too and in a determinate moment he is taken up with an ever-growing veneration for his spouse and adoration for the adoptive son of his who was born. He then lowers his eyes and then his head, well aware that something celestial had occurred. What if we could only see Our Lady and Saint Joseph praying through a crack in the walls of the grotto? Any of us would convert and become a great saint. The state of world events is so uncertain that it is impossible to know the conditions in which we will celebrate Christmas or what the new year will bring. This is a Christmas in which people are filled with uncertainty, trials and insecurity. One could rightly ask, is it proper to have these concerns during Christmas time? Shouldn't we only have consolations, joys and satisfaction during this season? To answer this question, we should consider the first Christmas night. Saint Joseph and above all Our Lady were filled with inexpressible joy in the grotto of Bethlehem. However, before the child Jesus was born, they suffered affliction. They had spent the night seeking a dignified place for our Lord's birth. Saint Joseph was humiliated seeing that his spouse would have to deliver the Christ child in a stable where animals ate. While there could not have been a more stupendous event that evening, neither could there have been humbler surroundings. 
The manger was all that Saint Joseph and Our Lady had to offer the child Jesus. Thus, the evening was filled with unfathomable joys, but it also had its sufferings. Although the Christ child knew that Providence had dictated the conditions of his birth, it is possible that Our Lady and Saint Joseph did not know about this. They could have been filled with doubts concerning the reasons for their poor surroundings, perhaps even attributing it to a wrongdoing of their own. Though faultless, Saint Joseph, who was responsible for providing for the Holy Family, probably asked God's pardon for the lowly accommodation that he had furnished for the Divine Infant's delivery. Nevertheless, the evening's joys overcame all its sadness to such an extent that the latter were completely forgotten. We should celebrate Christmas in the same manner. Though we be concerned with the crisis in the world, breakdown of society and aware of our insufficiency to face these calamities. Realizing that we are chosen to follow our Lord throughout these troubling times should fill us with joy and overcome the sadness we endure for our own personal feelings and the godlessness that surrounds us. At the feet of the newborn Christ child, we should thank Him for having called us to this struggle and these times. We should realize that we are only capable of resisting through His redemption for which His birth was a necessary condition. We ought to express this gratitude through the intercession of Our Lady, the Universal Mediatrix and Saint Joseph. We are in the habit of thinking that the infant Jesus was reposing in the manger, waiting for everyone to come to him. The historic reality is this, that our Lord was in the manger and people went to adore him. The three kings, the shepherds and besides other people who were passing by. But there is a theological reality, a supernatural reality which is very moving and very real too. On Christmas night, the infant Jesus in an invisible and spiritual manner went seeking out souls to come and know Him, love Him and adore Him. Every soul that passes through this earth has the mission of adoring our Lord Jesus Christ, of seeing a certain aspect of His ineffable, immeasurable and perfect sanctity. This aspect is unique for each soul. The infant Jesus, through grace, visits each and every soul at Christmas, and He plays the role of not one who receives a visit, but a one who goes in search for men, for men of all ages, languages and social conditions and says something special to each one which touches their heart. On Christmas night and even on the days preceding Christmas, the days already come anointed with the joy of Christmas. On these occasions, grace has already begun its work in us and each and every one, without realizing it, feels Christmas in a different yet special way. Present-day happenings 
show us the extent to which the world is beset by every kind of crisis. It is a world on the verge of the greatest collapse ever seen. How to avoid this colossal catastrophe which is approaching with the speed and force of a hurricane, asked Monsignor Jean-Claude Diaz. Let us draw near the manger and through the intercession of Mary Most Holy and Saint Joseph, beg pardon for the inveterate pride, relativism, impiety, egoism and sensuality of this sinful and atheistic humanity in which we live. Let us also implore the infant Jesus to restore true love in the hearts of men, because whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love is revealed among us in this way. God sent His only Son into the world so that we might live through Him, and only in this way will we obtain true peace. And so, let us turn to our Mother Mary Most Holy and pray through her and through the intercession of Saint Joseph that the Divine Infant may grant us this Christmas the most important grace of all, the Kingdom of God in our hearts and in the world. Amen.